All right, now this looks at um, the evidence of electron transfer. What we've covered so far is the redox equations, which deal with um, the donation of electrons. Obviously, we looked at oxidation and reduction, where oxidation was the addition of oxygen. And then we said we changed that a bit, and we said, well, really, it's not just oxygen. We looked at it in a different light, and we said, well, what it is is the addition of electrons. Okay? So, or, sorry, the donation of electrons, where oxidation is... Um, the um, loss of electrons and um, reduction is the gaining of electrons. So that's what we defined oxidation as, as giving away electrons and reduction as gaining electrons. How we can actually see this in, um, in reality, what we can do is move these two reactions away from each other and we can connect them with a wire Okay, connect them with a wire means that electrons can go through the wire and what we know as being the flow of electrons is electricity. So we can measure how much electricity we get from a certain reaction by looking at the flow of electrons from one part, one reactant to the next reactant. And what this is called is a galvanic cell. So a galvanic cell is um, a, a thing, a um, apparatus that we use to look at redox equations and measure how much electricity and um, stuff we get from a redox equation. And they look kind of like that. We've got two beakers there with um, two metal strips in a solution and they're connected by a voltmeter or something that can measure um, voltage. We can also measure the current that comes out of these things as well, but we normally measure um, voltage from these. They're connected in the middle, you can see there, by a salt bridge and the salt bridge is there um, because obviously one side we're losing electrons from, and the other side's gaining electrons. So the salt bridge is there to balance out the charges that have been lost or gained from each side. Moving on, let's have a look at what this is all about. The first thing we need to understand is here's the basic idea of a, um, a galvanic cell, is electrons are leaving from one side and they're flowing towards the other side, thus creating a flow of electricity and thus being um, showing oxidation happening and reduction happening. In this um, example we've got zinc and copper strips in a solution of their respective ions and we're saying that the zinc here is being oxidized and therefore it's losing its electrons. Because it's being oxidized and losing electrons, the electrons are leaving the zinc. Because the electrons are leaving the zinc, okay, we call that the negative terminal or the negative anode. Okay? Electrons are going towards the copper because the copper in this case is being reduced. Um, because the electrons are flowing towards the copper, we call this the positive cathode. And we're going to go through terminology in a second as well. So um, we have a negative anode where the electrons are leaving from, where we have oxidation, and the positive cathode where we have the reduction happening. So here, just diagrams showing it. that's where the zinc is and the oxidation is happening, and that's where the copper is happening as well. We have the overall equation and we've talked about making overall equations as well, so that we'll get more into this stuff later on. Anyway, our parts of our galvanic cell. As I was saying, we have an anode. This is the negative terminal where electrons leave from. That's where our oxidation happens. We have a cathode, which is a positive terminal where electrons go to, we have, which is reduction. So reduction is happening at the cathode. We have a thing called the electrolyte. The electrolyte is the solution that the electrodes are placed into. Okay, so you have an electrode, which is the solid part of it, and you have the electrolyte, where this is solution, where the electrodes are placed into. You also have the salt bridge, which is an ionic compound, basically um, a bit of um, paper or tissue or something like that, which is soaked in something ionic, and that's basically there to complete the circuit, and it replenishes the charges that are lost. Because at the anode, we have electrons leaving, so that's becoming more positive. So what we want to do is, after the electrons leave, we want to replenish it with some more negative ions, and they come from the salt bridge. And we're going to talk about more about this and explain ways of drawing these things as well. The way to remember these parts of a galvanic cell is to simply think about Red Cat. Um, Red Cat is a cafe um, in sale, so you're going to remember that Red Cat is um, where reduction happens. So reduction happens at the cathode, and what Red Cat do is they sell coffee, so it makes you happy. So Red Cats are positive. So red cat positive. Remember that 
that's the parts of the galvanic cell. The red reduction happens at the cathode and it's the positive terminal. We need to know how to draw these things as well. So it's nice to know what they are and we need to know how to draw them. What we're going to run through quickly um, on the screen now is how to, the basic ideas of how to draw them. But I'm also going to do some um, examples of drawing galvanic cells um, as another YouTube clip, another video where I'm actually going to be doing a problem um, live for you as well. So we'll do that a bit later on. But galvanic cells drawing, and how do we do it? What we first of all need to do is draw two beakers with a salt bridge and a wires and an ammeter or a voltmeter there, more so than anything else. Not, not really an ammeter, more or less a voltmeter because we, we normally measure voltage. So some of these notes you just cross out when I say things. So the, the ammeter, cross that out and write voltmeter because it's normally a voltmeter um, for galvanic cells. What we then do is um, we need to put in it underneath this before this one, okay? We need to write in um, that we we write down everything that's in the two beakers that we have. And this is going to make more sense when I do a couple of examples for you um, on the next one. But we have um, two beakers. We're going to give you given information in our question about what's in those two beakers. So I need to write those things down. After that, we've got to write half equations underneath the beakers. Once we have our half equations, okay, what we'll then know is if it's going to be oxidation or reduction. And we'll be able to label the cathode because we know red cat. And we'll also be able to um, show the anode and then the flow of electricity as well, which way the electrons are going to go. This is all going to make sense when you, um, sorry, when you go on to the next um, video of me actually doing the drawing for you as well. And, or you go onto the YouTube and look at the videos that I've put there for you. Example is here where we have that and we draw the two breakers, salt break the wires, we write the half equations, we label the cathode, the red cat, and we label the anode and show the direction of electricity. This is what will be shown on your on YouTube or um, another video that you download. Anyway, moving on from this, how do we know what our half equations are? Because we haven't really defined how we find that. The way we look at what reactions are going to happen comes from this thing called the electrochemical series. The electrochemical series here, um, it is a... Um, basically a list of reactivity, reactive metals. Okay? It's mainly to do with metals. There's some non-metals in a longer one as well. But the main thing is the electrochemical series deals with um, reactivity of metals. Um, there's a couple of labels here that I want to talk to you about. Um, in the corners, you've got where the strongest oxidants are and the strongest reductants. You've got to remember those. The top, right, sorry, the top left hand corner is where the, your strongest oxidants are. Your bottom left hand corner is where your strongest reductants are. And as we go along with this, you'll understand, you'll learn a bit more about what these labels mean. Basically, what it means is the strongest oxidant, the thing at the top um, left of the corner, um, the highest thing on the left hand side, is going to be the thing that's going to be most likely to react. If you have something that's really high up in the left hand side, that's something that's going to really want to react. And then if you have something on the right, bottom right hand side, that's something that's going to want to react as well. Notice that we have our ions on the left-hand side and our solids, our metals, on the right-hand side. Okay, So our metals there on the right-hand side, they go in order of reactivity. The lowest reactivity is up the top there where we have the weakest reductant and the strongest reactivity is down the bottom where we have our strongest reductant happening. Okay, So remember about reactivity in that respect. Moving on we're going to have a look at how we're going to use this electric trigger series. And as I said, it's about the reactivity of the elements. So we have the most reactive is down the bottom and the least reactive is at the top. That's on terms of the right-hand side of them. This also tells you if the reaction is going to be spontaneous. Spontaneous means it will happen without any extra input from your cells. So we're going to look at how we use that. The way that we predict um, a reaction is by writing down everything that we have in our half cell. And then what we look at is on our electrochemical series, if we have a link, diagonal link downwards, we have a reaction. So if we have something that's higher on the left hand side and lower on the right hand side, we have a reaction happening. I'll give you a couple of examples here. Okay. If there's anything up the top left hand side, we have a reaction with something down the bottom right hand side like that says there. We don't have a reaction if we go uphill. 
a nice way to remember this is it's harder to go uphill than it is downhill. So therefore we have a, um, a reaction between the thing that's highest on the left hand side and lowest on the right hand side. So the biggest gradient, biggest negative gradient I should say, is where we have the reaction. The highest thing on the left, the lowest thing on the right. For example, if we have zinc is placed in a solution of silver chloride, predict what will happen. And if so, if something happens, predict if a reaction will happen. If so, write a balanced equation for this. Let's have a look. What's in this half cell? Okay, we've got zinc, solid, silver chloride. Silver chloride is an ionic compound. It's made up of silver ions and chlorine ions. So what we're going to have is we're going to have um, silver chloride silver ion, silver plus, chlorine negative, okay, we're going to have zinc solid, just zinc as itself, and water. To a very small extent we're going to have hydrogen ions and OH ions, but we're going to ignore that really. We're not going to really think about that we have those things. The main things we have are the top things there. Just write out that we have silver ions, chlorine ions, zinc solid, and some water in there because it's a solution. What we do now, once we've written down everything that's there, is we look for our diagonal link. Where is our diagonal link going to happen? What's the highest thing on the right-hand side? Okay, we look at it and we realise the highest thing on the right-hand side is our silver ions. Our lowest thing on our right-hand side, sorry, our highest thing on our left-hand side is our silver ions, which I've highlighted there for you. And our lowest thing on our right-hand side is our zinc solid. So these two things are going to what's going to happen, and this is what's going to react. Okay, the top reaction goes forward. The top one is our reduction, and our bottom one is our oxidation. So we'll write out our oxidation as our bottom reaction, and our reduction as our top reaction. The top one goes forward. The bottom one goes backwards. I'm not too sure if I've written this out for you here. Okay, I haven't actually. So just looking at this. We write out our two half equations, and then what we do is if we need to, we can write a full equation by adding these two half equations together. There's going to be lots of examples of these um, on the next video, so um, just remember the main thing that I want to get you from this is we look for the top on the left and the bottom on the right, and our top thing goes forward and our bottom one goes backwards. It will be much more better explained when you actually see me doing a question live there for you as well. Moving on, here's an example. Won't do this now. I might do it on our next video because I can't actually draw on this machine at the moment. I need to draw um, and video myself drawing. So we can't do this question just yet, but we'll do it next time. Here's another example of doing a galvanic cell. Okay, When we draw a galvanic cell, we have the following pair of half cells. We have a silver and silver iron half cell and a aluminium ion and an aluminium solid half cell. What we need to write down, what we need to do is draw our beakers, write down what's in them and look for our reaction that's going to happen. So let's have a look what that looks like. What's in each half cell? It tells you in the question. Find the diagonal link. Okay, let's just do this here. Okay, draw the galvanic cell. We've drawn the galvanic cell here. Okay, we've drawn the two beakers, we've written what's in each beaker. We find the um, diagonally down link, which is back here. Okay, There's the diagonally link, the highest thing on the left hand side, the lowest thing on the right side. So the highest thing on the left hand side is our silver again. Okay, It's a very strong oxidant, silver ions. Okay, Our lowest thing on the right hand side is our aluminium solid. Okay. So these are the things that are going to react. The top one is going to react forwards. The bottom one's going to react backwards. Okay, and so these are our reactions that's going to happen. We have our silver ions forming silver solid. We have our aluminium solid forming aluminium ions. We're going to look at what's what here. Okay, what is which? Where is our reduction happening? Our reduction is happening here in our silver. Um, thing because we have our electrons on our left hand side. Because our electrons on our left hand side in our silver equation, that means that it's a cathode and it's reduction, so electrons are going to go towards the silver. Okay, so it's a cathode reduction, so 
so therefore our electrons are going to go to our silver. That means our salt bridge anion, our negative ion, is going to go towards the anode there. This example is pretty poorly done, and I apologise for that, I didn't realise how badly it was done. Normally I, I do this in front of the class, but I'm doing it, trying to do it this way anyway. For an example better than this, please look at um, the next video, because it's going to go through it in a bit, lot more detail and be explained to you in a lot, well, much better. So that's basically galvanic cells and how to use the electrochemical series. As I said, there's going to be another podcast, another video, okay, that you can watch. A couple of things, a couple of limitations of these. The electrochemical series, um, it tells you that a reaction will happen, but it doesn't tell you how fast the reaction is going to happen. That's the only problem. So technically, um, a reaction will definitely happen when you put um, aluminium in water. A reaction is going to happen according to the electrochemical series, but it doesn't happen fast enough for you to see it. So that's one limitation that we have. So if you have a question that says, if should a reaction happen, and it says yes, but we don't see a reaction happening, the reason is the reaction is too slow to be able to be viewed. That's if the electrochemical series tells you the reaction is going to happen, but it doesn't, it means that the reaction rate is very, very slow. Okay, so that's, the questions there are just um, questions from the Heinemann textbook. You should be really looking at doing all of those questions anyway. It's what I, what I expect, really, just do as many questions as possible and look for help, ask for help. So there it is. Um, you have your electrochemical series, you have your galvanic cells. Please watch the next video for examples of how to actually draw these um, galvanic cells and then you can have a crack at the questions. So, take it easy and watch the next video.